Hi everyone and welcome back out to Harvest Hills Ranch. You're looking for chicken for your family and you want to give them the right choice and you're thinking pasture raised is the direction I want to go. It doesn't get any better than that. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Arlen Hill and I have a passion for all things health and wellness related and today we're going to be talking about pasture raised and asking the question, is that really the best choice for your family and if it is, is that the only thing that you should be looking for? Well, let's talk about first of all this whole concept of pasture raised and let's contrast that against what the alternative is. And the alternative is fairly straightforward. It's the conventional model where there are chicken houses and the animals are confined to that chicken house and they're not going to be out on pasture. They're not going to have access to green grass, to sunlight, to bugs that are on the ground. None of that's going to take place. Well, that seems like a pretty easy answer, right? I mean, we're probably at the end of the video. Well, not so fast, guys. So while pasture raised is, the, if you're looking to try to truly optimize the, the sourcing of the bird and the value of the bird and, and what the, the life of the bird, you want to really look at all of those factors, pasture raised is the better option. Yes, you're going to get the exposure to the grass. That chicken is consuming some of that grass. And I hate to tell you guys, if you're new to this conversation around chickens, chickens don't live and cannot live, sustain themselves on grass alone. They're active and they're active birds and they have fast metabolisms and they need more than just grass. But grass absolutely has its value for them. It influences these fatty acids, which we're, which we're going to talk about. And all that green coloration, well, that's helping them detoxify and providing them with chlorophyll, which has its own benefits. I don't want to digress into that conversation. I want to stick with what are the questions you should be asking about the pasture raised chicken that you're looking to purchase. And actually, let me also say that everything I'm getting ready to say in the context of chicken also applies to turkey, to duck, to poultry in general. So if there's a, a poultry that you're consuming or looking to bring into your home that's not chicken, well, everything that I'm getting ready to say to you still applies. So this conversation really came about for me based on one that I had with a patient a few weeks ago and stating to me that the I'm buying pasture raised birds and the individual said that they're corn free and they're soy free fed and hey those are the things that I'm looking for. Everybody's on the corn free soy free bandwagon and I know that that's just the right thing. Here's the question you need to be asking. Why are you choosing corn free and soy free? Now, before any of you suggest that I'm getting ready to promote corn and soy or that I'm the corn and soy advocate, no such thing is the case. But what I am going to tell you is that if you're buying into the corn free and the soy free ideology and you're not following up and asking what are you replacing these with, you may be no better off with these than you were at the outset of having corn and soy in there. Now, let's also make an assumption, and, I, and or let's not make an assumption, and I'm actually going to go ahead and write this up here because I feel like it's important. We need to be on the same page and agree that we are talking about non GMO, non-genetically modified corn, non-genetically modified soy. If your farmer, if the individual vendor you're purchasing this from is of the mindset that they want to take these out, the next question you need to ask is what did you replace those with? And why were you more comfortable with those replacements than you were with the corn? Was it Milo? Was it some other high energy source? Was it wheat? What was the rationale for switching that over? And tell me why you think that what you switched in the feed of that animal is a better choice. If they're going to share with you that they're taking out corn because it's genetically modified or soy because it's genetically modified, we just eliminated that argument. Let's just talk in terms of non-GMO. If we replace that with wheat, we what what did we didn't do anything and maybe you're thinking I don't want wheat in my feed that's a whole other conversation for another video and 
we'll deal with that in that video. You can actually see some previous ones that I've shot around that. But replacing this with wheat doesn't move this forward, it doesn't improve anything. So ultimately what we're trying to improve here are the fatty acids. If you take these grains out, and remember, you have to have an energy source for these birds to keep them productive. If you take these grains out, you have to ask, what did removing this grain do to the fat? These fatty acids are not being talked about enough. And if we're just looking at this in the context of omega-3s and omega-6s, we're missing the boat on that. We need to reframe how we think about this. The omega-3 and omega-6 conversation, that's all polyunsaturated fats. And I'm not going to get too biochemical here, but you can read these same type of terms on a, an ingredient, on the uh, food facts, on a, on a food container. Saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat need to be differentiated in this conversation. If the efforts that we're taking with keeping these out, with keeping the corn and the soy out, don't improve the fatty acids, what did they actually do? Probably nothing. So what this means for you as the consumer is that, yes, you need to ask, is this bird pasture raised? Is it raised with good principles? Are these birds being moved? Are they rotated? All of that is absolutely important. But that is not where your questioning should end at. You should go to the next step and ask, what are you doing in terms of your feed to try to help improve the fatty acids? And if you're telling me that you're taking out corn and soy, what are you replacing that with? And what's the impact, not just on that bird, what is the impact for you as the human consuming that on your health? If we didn't have an influence on moving that saturated, monounsaturated, if we're not influencing that in any way, you probably should have just left the corn and the soy in there. Now, let me say one other thing about this, and I don't, this could be a rabbit hole, but it's worth you knowing, is that even in the context of non-GMO, right? Even in the context of non-GMO, not all soy is the same. There is not one, one, there's not one single non-GMO variety of soybeans. There's multiple varieties of non-GMO soybeans. And if your farmer is not, if, if they don't have an understanding in that difference in those various varieties, then they're not going to be able to relate the impact that the availability of that soy is having on these fatty acids in a positive way for you consuming that. Ways that we're talking about reducing your inflammation, making your cell membranes more stable, overall optimizing your health. That is what we're talking about. Otherwise, why are we consuming this food in the first place? Why are we going to all these efforts if we're not going to ultimately reach the end point that we set out for for better health? Otherwise, we may just follow, we might as well just follow the conventional model, right? We're, we're, not, we're not seeking out pasture-raised birds unless we're optimizing or trying to optimize our health. So, to the point, ask questions beyond pasture-raised, if you're corn and soy free, why are you corn and soy free? And the changes that you decided to make, what impact is that having on the fatty acids in that bird? And in turn, how does that impact me as the human consuming that? If you're going to make the decisions and you're going to put a product out there, you should know what the end result and how that product is going to affect the consumer that's ultimately purchasing your product. Hope you found this information insightful, guys. I hope it gets you to think Honestly, what I, what I hope is that it gets you to think beyond just these terms and these labels that we hear all the time, whether it's pasture-raised or natural or organic or vegetarian-fed. All of these are just marketing terms. They don't mean anything. What is important is that you have the ability to ask more of your individual that you're purchasing food from and have a better understanding of what it is that you're actually buying and the practices and the ethics that they apply to that production process. So 
Try that out next time you have a conversation with the individuals producing your food. Hey, if you're looking for more information about whether it's what we do out here at the ranch in terms of food and how we raise it and some of these topics that I've brought up, certainly go check out my other videos, but also go to harvesthillsranch.com and you can see how Leah and I raise food with uncompromising principles. And if you want to know more about how I work with patients and how we ended up in conversations like this in the first place, you can go to Dr. Arlen hill.com and you can find out all about how we support patients there as well until next time guys we'll see you soon